Our Father in heaven, we thank you and we bless your name for this day, for this time, for this Bible study. We thank you for the Deeper Christian Life Ministry that you have raised up yourself to preach and to teach the Word of God without favor and without fear. We thank you because of this fellowship center that you have provided so that we can come together any time and every time so we can gather around the table of the Lord and examine the word of God so we can prepare for the coming of the Lord. Father, we thank you and bless your name because of the privilege we have in Christ. Father, we pray that as we come here today to listen to your word and to get what is the mind of Christ, we pray that none of us will go empty-handed in Jesus' name. Yeah. Teach us your word. Yeah. Write this word within us and on the tables of our hearts. Yeah. That every step we take, every word we speak, every thought coming out of us, and every imagination will be according to the word of God. Yeah. And after we have heard, Give us the grace to obey your word. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In our study tonight, we're going to thoroughly examine chapter 6 of the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 6 for the benefit of those who are coming for the first time or who have not been here for too long. Here we come together from different backgrounds and different denominations. Some who come here have not been attending church services before. And um, others have been attending church services before, but they have the eagerness to know the Lord more, to understand the word of God more, and to have their faith confirmed in the Lord Jesus Christ. And here we don't um, put any difference between Ebos and Yorubas and Epic and Ausas. Here we all come having the same opportunity to learn the word of God. And um, you should feel free when you come here. And the only book we recognize here when we teach and when we study is the Holy Bible. And if you are coming, you don't have uh, the Holy Bible, uh, make sure that you get one. It's um, the greatest book that you can read and study, and all you need, all you want in Christ is in that book for you. How many of you brought your Bibles uh, tonight? Uh, don't raise up an empty hand, raise up that Bible and let me see. All right, if you didn't bring any Bible, uh, before next Monday, make sure that you buy one. If you say, well, I don't have any money, let me remind you of what Jesus Christ said. He said, if you don't have any sword, sell your garment and buy one. And you can get a Bible to buy in English, in Yoruba, in Ausa, in Igbo, in Epic. If you are buying the English Bible, the King James Version, uh, will be of much help to you in studying the Bible. I'm now in Genesis chapter 6 from verse 1. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, beautiful and they took them wives of all which they chose and the Lord said my spirit shall not always strive with man 
for that he also is flesh. Yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years. There were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bear children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown, men of fame, men of popularity. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. God was sorrowful. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping thing, and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Verse 11. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt for all flesh, men and women, had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. We're reading about the judgment of God that came upon the world at a particular time. What we're reading today is written down for a particular purpose in Romans Chapter 15, verse 4. We read, For whatsoever things were written aforetime, that is, before this time, were written for our learning, that we, we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. We have read there that what was written in Genesis before this time was written for your learning and my learning. You bachelors, you spinters, you who are already married, churchgoers, those who are saved and those who are not saved yet, all this we're reading tonight is written for our learning that we through the comfort of the scriptures might have hope in first corinthians chapter 10 verse 6 now these things were our examples to the intent that is for the purpose that we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. In verse 11, now 
all these things happened unto them for examples. And they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore, let him that sinketh he standeth, take heed lest he fall. Pastor, preacher, evangelist, preacher, Sunday school teacher, Christian workers, and those who are coming to this Bible study, if others are careless, I say judgment will not come. And if others live, I say God cannot see. If others live, I say their works, their lives will not be discovered and will not be known. You who know the Bible, you who know that God has not changed, you who know that God is a God of judgment, you need to read the Bible over and over and over again because judgment will come. A few years ago, there was um, an assembly of Christians, of believers. And there was um, a man that was coming to that church service. Every time, he never missed a service. And, um, but he was living in sin with another person's wife committing sin, committing adultery, and this particular time they were meeting together to study the word of God, the preacher there went to him as he knelt down, praying, and the pastor said, businessman, you're living in secret sin. I don't know that secret sin, but God told me to warn you, stop sinning. Don't come here to this a place of worship and just pretend confess your sin repent of your sin and turn away from your sin that businessman said look here I'm a sincere fellow I don't have any secret sin don't tell any lie on me the pastor went away and this fellow prayed and he went away and still continued in that secret sin he came back to that same church and an elder in that same place and he prayed and the Lord told the preacher go to him that hypocrite and warn him that uh, he's living in secret sin and there are some of you looking at me right now you have the name that you live but you are dead you have the name you are a brother you are a sister but you are a child of the devil and you have a name that you have been a Christian worker for many years, but you are serving the devil every day and every night in the day and in the evening and at noon. And you know it. And just because your name has not been announced, over here you say, I am saved, I am sanctified, I am baptized in the Holy Ghost. But when you will be judged, I will know it. And everybody will know it. And your landlords will know and your Christian workers will know. And people who are working under you will know. And your wife will know. And your husband will know. And everybody will know you have just been a hypocrite. And the preacher went to that fellow and said, Confess your secret sin. You are not living right. He said, Look here, I am living right. Don't disgrace me in public. And he went away. And he came the third time. And the preacher went to him and said, This is the last time that I'm going to warn you. The Lord said you are living in secret sin. You know some people, because they have money, they feel they can just pick any girlfriend in the house of God. They can live in sin. They can commit fornication. They can live in adultery. And they can buy a place with money in the church. But you won't do it for long. Because Sodom and Gomorrah did not do it for eternity. One day, fire came down, stopped all of them from committing sin, and they went right into hellfire, straight ahead. Korah, Desa, and Abiram did not get away with it. The eyes opened up, and they were swallowed up and went to hell alive. 
And Pharaoh, a great man and a king, said, Who is that God? And the question came, I am that God right in the middle of the Red Sea. And Achan didn't get away with it. He stole that wedge of gold and the goodly garments and he hid it in the tent. But the judgment day came and he was swallowed up. In death he was stoned and he was burnt alive. I mean he was burnt after he had been stoned and he went into hell straight. You know, Ananias and Sapphira, they wanted to give money to the how to the work of the Lord. And they came, and us came, and he said, Oh, we are fine Christians, saved, sanctified, and baptized in the Holy Ghost. Flowing with the Holy Ghost and with the gifts of the Spirit. In fact, we speak in tongues. And here we are, we're so consecrated that we are brought an offering to the Lord. And Peter said, Why has Satan filled your heart? Oh, no. I'm not filled with Satan. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. And I'm just dedicated and consecrated. I am sanctified. And my all is on the altar. And he said, why have you lied? Why have you lied? Why have you lied? And after Peter spoke, he dropped down dead. And he went into hell. And the wife, in agreement and partnership with sin. Well, you know how you discuss with your husband on the bed. In the room, gossiping, you know everybody, so and so. When did you get a license to gossip because you are married? When did you get a license to slander and to judge and to put down other people because you are married? And then this other fellow, a Safara, came in agreement and uh, just came in and said, Did my husband come here to bring that um, great amount of money? That were brought to the Lord. And the apostle said, now come here. It's true you are married. But you still have a Christian leader. And that Christian leader still has authority over you. Why? Tell me. Is it so much that you sold that land? Oh yes, it's so much. I'm in agreement with my husband. Everything my husband told you was the absolute truth. And he said, how have you agreed together to serve Satan? To commit sin? The feet of them that carried out her husband, they, they have just come. And hearing that she dropped down dead, and she was buried near her husband, and they went to the same hot lake of fire. God is still the judge. And you know, there was a day when that uh, man, Herod, just came around and uh, spoke to some people. After speaking, he didn't, uh, he didn't tell them at home that I'll be going to hell this afternoon. No, nobody says uh, goodbye to the mother, to the father, to the children, to the wives, and to all the people saying, well, bye-bye, uh, uh, I'll be leaving today. No, he didn't say bye-bye at home. He just came to address some people. And when he addressed them, the people gave a shout and they said, wonderful, great, that's the voice of a God. And he said, yes, you mark me right. I'm an orator. I can speak well. And the glory that should be given to God... He received that glory immediately. The angels, an angel came and just smote him. And he died right there. And immediately he was eating with worms. And he went to hell straight. Let me come back to this man that came to church. And the pastor, the preacher warned him and said, You are leaving his sin. He said, No, I'm not leaving his sin. And he said, For the last time you have been warned. For the last time you have been warned. For the last time you have been warned. If you don't repent, God is going to bring your sin to the open. He did not. just um, goes in to see with another man and the husband said well my wife will not do anything like that but um, I'll go and see and uh, he returned home but he didn't go into the room he packed his car far away with a gun a revolver in his hand and he was standing in a corner and here came this millionaire a millionaire will not say that is a bank don't let the fire go near that God doesn't need all the papers over there 
everything will be burned. Everything. Everything. And this was a millionaire. And he climbed through the stairs. And he went on. And as he was going, just getting into that room, that man fired him. And his brain split open. And he died right there. Right there. A newspaper came and took the pictures. And the second day, in that continent, all over, it showed on the paper. They gave his name. They gave what happened. And he went to hell disgraced here in the world. And you don't know if you don't repent. When your judgment will come, you can hide it. You can do it in darkness. But God can see you in the dark as well as during the day. And today we're reading this. And um, we cannot tell. We cannot tell. I don't like telling people bad stories. But sometimes there are some stories that uh, you just need to hear. You just need to hear. You don't know the last message you'll be hearing before the trumpet sounds in the sky. It might be this message. Who knows? Because the stage is set and Jesus will come at any time. And you might be committing sin and hiding it. And saying, I am sister so and so. And I have a license to commit sin. Well, you will tell the story on the other side of the grave. I am brother so and so. I have the license to commit sin. You will tell the story on the other side of the grave. Judgment is coming. Let's go back to Genesis chapter 6. God had a purpose for writing this. Putting this down. It came to pass. When men began to multiply on the face of the earth. And daughters were born unto them. That the sons of God saw the daughters of men. We cannot tell. How many people have gone to hell because of women? Those who have overcome smoking and drinking. Those who have overcome the telling of lies. Those who have made all their institutions. And those who don't even have the love of money. Those who don't have anything to do with other sins and carnalities in the world. When it comes to women, they fall down flat and roll in sin. And swim in sin. And eat in sin. When it comes to women. Those who will not take bribes. Those who will not practice any falsehood. Those who are honest generally. When it comes to women. They just fall down flat. And the same thing with women. Before the flesh rises up to uh, do anything with war against them. They kneel down. They say, Lord, I will serve you. I'll be saved. And they get saved. They get sanctified. They get baptized in the Holy Ghost. But when it comes to marriage, or if they are married, maybe the husband travels for a week or for two weeks, and then they start feeling lonely. They say, what will I do now? And then even though they have overcome the devil in every area, every area, when it comes to the flesh, they just fall down flat. And men who are married. That you are married doesn't mean that you are free from fornication or adultery. For the first two months, the first three months after you are married, uh, you will say, Ah, heaven and earth, no see that I, I will never go near any other woman. Uh, wait a minute, wait, wait. If you don't pray, if you don't crucify this flesh, and in your office, there are some ladies that uh, you'll say, well, uh, lady so and so, well, you know I'm married, and because I'm married now, there is no trouble. You can have five naira, you can have ten naira, buy a scarf, buy um, clothes, buy headgear, buy shoes, buy a bag. And before you know what is happening, you'll be coming to the Bible study and praying, God, remove this lady away from my heart. After all, I'm married. Don't let them know that I, I have this in my heart. Then you go back to the office. You call that lady again. Lady, how are you? I was last night. I think uh, you are all right. And then 
When you close from your place of work, you won't go home. You stay in the office discussing with another woman. And you say you are not committing sin. You say you are saved. You say you are sanctified. You say you are baptized in the Holy Ghost. But judgment is coming. And on that day, everybody will be surprised. In fact, some will be so surprised when some people are turned over into hell that they'll go to God and say, Ah, God, are you making a mistake? I know so and so. A real Christian ah, is my soul winner. Is the one who led me to the Lord. Is one of our, our Bible study leaders. Is one of our pastors. And uh, this is one of the reasons the pastors uh, sometimes don't like me because uh, I like to tell pastors that they also need to be careful. Need to be careful. Because that Satan will bring a, a woman in your church to you as a pastor. And will say, well, you can touch her. After all, it's not that you are going to commit adultery. I mean, this woman has fever. How will you feel the fever? If you don't touch her cheek, if you don't touch her neck, and, and just touch her to feel, how hot are you? And as you are feeling, just wanting to feel how hot she is with the fever, with the malaria, you get into sin. And then you come back to church, uh, changing your message and say, if the Lord will mark iniquity, who will stand? Yes, we all know that you are not standing. We know that you are not standing. We know that you are not standing. Judgment will be coming. And you'll be surprised, you'll be surprised on that day. When judgment begins to fall, and you'll say, God, are you making a mistake? We know so and so. He's sanctified. No, he's not sanctified. He's only living sanctimoniously. We know so and so is holy. No, it's not holy. It's only acting in the attitude of holier than thou. He is not holy. It's dirty. It's defiled. It's living in sin. Women have destroyed him. And that is why we ought to be careful. We ought to be very careful. It came to pass. It happened. When men began to multiply on the face of the earth, that daughters were born unto them. That the sons of God, the children of God, the believers, those who are godly and righteous, they started to look. They started to look at the ladies in the world. You know some people in the bus, when the ladies don't dress right, the men, instead of either reading your Bible, and praying, Father, don't let me see what is evil. People say they don't watch television. You don't watch television. You mean you don't watch the television they buy with money? The television you watch in the, you watch in the bus stop, how about that one? The naked woman, is that not television? Or are you not watching television? It is not the television box that is a sin. It is a picture that is evil. That they see on television that is bad. And if you are watching it in the bus stop, watching it in the bus, watching it in your place of work, or people are taking their bus and then you are peeping through the hole of the door, the keyhole, and you say you are not watching television, you old sinner. And they began to look at the women. And when people come to the Bible study, well, we know that not all people who come to the Bible study are already saved, already born again. Some are coming who are coming for the first time. And they just want to love the Lord. They want us to show them the way to love the Lord. And they want, to show, they want us to show them the way so that they can get saved. And we love them. That's why they are here. They want to know what must I do to be saved. But um, some people, they just look at those people. And if those people are exposing their nakedness, that is all they are looking for. That's all they are looking at. And then they say they are having problems with the flesh. So the sons of God, the children of God, the believers, they saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, that they were beautiful. And they took them wives of all which they chose. Already 
Some people are feeling, if I don't marry this week, I will not continue Christianity. And he said, God, give me a wife, give me a wife, give me a wife. And before God answers, they're already looking. After the Bible study, sister, what's your name? How do you know she's a sister? Because um, she's not wearing jewelry. Uh -uh. She came here last week. She came here last month. And she saw that the people are not wearing jewelry. And the jewelry is in the bag. And therefore you go to the person. You say, sister, what is your name? And the person says, I'm so and so. Well, God says, I must marry you. Number one, you are telling a lie against God. Because you don't pray, and you know you don't pray, and you don't know how to know the will of God. Why are you, why are you doubling your sin, telling a lie on God? God said, God said, God said, when God has not said anything. And you are only looking at the facial appearances of the people. As the members of the choir, as they are coming out to sing, you are looking at them. Yes, I like that one. I like that one. And then you go to that one and you say, eh, Sister, how do you know she's a sister? Because she's singing in the choir. You think all people singing in the choir automatically are children of God? I don't know. And you don't know. It's only God who knows who are Christians. Those who are born again. Those who are living right. The Bible says, Behold, your sins will find you out. And your sins will find you out. And your sins will find you out. I went to see a preacher. I went to see a preacher. And this preacher was looking at the picture of a, of a naked woman on a particular play page of a particular newspaper. And um, as I entered in, and um, I, I, I caught his eyes looking at that scene, and then he opened the page and started reading some other parts. Well, who are we deceiving? Who are we deceiving? You children of God, when you begin to see any beauty in ladies in the world, already you are backsliding. And you daughters of God, you who are sisters, when you begin to see that the men of the world are handsome, you are already backsliding. You are already backsliding. Because God refuses believers to marry unbelievers. And that was their sin here. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 7. Deuteronomy chapter 7. From verse 1. When the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land whither thou goest to possess it, and has cast out many nations before thee, the Hittites, the Gagashites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites, seven nations great and mightier than thou. And when the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them, and utterly destroy them. Thou shalt make no covenant, no agreement with them, nor show mercy unto them. Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Mark that verse 3 in your Bible. And when Satan comes to tell you to marry an unbeliever, just open to that place and see that the children of God are not supposed to marry unbelievers. Neither shall thou make marriages with them. If you do it, you are committing sin. If you do it, you are backsliding. If you do it, your name is out of the book of life. No matter who you are. Sometimes your mother will call you and say, Well, already we have paid the dowry for you uh, of a particular lady. And uh, they are paid, their people are good. And at your age, you ought to marry. And already we are, we are ashamed of it. And already we have made all arrangements. Therefore, uh, my son, ju just take him. Just take her. And after all, you can take her to your church. And you go and convert her. Can you convert anybody? No. Can you convert even yourself? No. And sometimes to a lady, and they call you and they say, what are you looking at? 
anyway, um, we have made all the arrangements for you. And um, Mr. So and So's son will marry you. And there's uh, some ladies who are Christians will say, well, maybe it is the will of God because all things work together for good. All things work together for good. For the sinners, for the compromisers, for those who are backsliding. No, for them that fear the Lord. And you don't fear the Lord when you go to marry an unbeliever. Neither shall thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son. Why? For they will turn away thy son from following me, that they may serve other gods. We must not do it. We must not do it. In um, 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, reading from verse 14. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. That's a commandment. For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? If you are righteous by the cleansing of the blood of Jesus, you have nothing to do with unbelievers, with those who are unrighteous. And what communion has light with darkness? It starts in a small way, and it is better not to start at all. Because... The devil will be telling you, well, do it, nobody will know you. Do it, they will not catch you. Do it, and uh, if you are married, uh, your wife uh, will not know. Do it, if you are married, your husband will not know. And uh, you know what people do. There are those uh, who are married, and they are pregnant, and the pregnancy is not for their husbands. Although the husbands may not know, but they know. They know. And there are ladies who are pregnant, but who are running about to a chemist. And they are running about to a pharmacist, and they are saying, they must not know in our Bible study. If they know, they'll, they announce about me. If they know, they will, tell, they will say, I'm a sinner. Well, whether we say it or not, a person who is pregnant without getting married, is he not a sinner? Of course, it's a sinner. And there are times you even want to marry a believer. And um, before actually the marriage, already you have met together. And the lady is pregnant. And um, as the sister, so-called sister, knows that she is pregnant, I will call the brother and say, what shall we do now? Uh -uh, we must marry in time. Right now, 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 now. So that you can cover this thing. And then you go to the pastor and you say, Pastor, we uh, want to marry next week. And the pastor will say, uh-uh. When did you plan that one? Oh, you know the one that just came this January and you said that uh, you have seen that you are going to marry sister so and so. Yes, God said that if we don't marry next week, uh, we'll miss his will. Because you don't want people to know that already the lady is pregnant. And then you come around in the Bible study saying, eh, eh, Brother, have you heard that I'm marrying next week? Eh, I didn't know I, I'm marrying next week. I, have you heard I'm marrying next week? Have you heard I'm marrying next week? Have you heard I'm marrying next week? And you go around to people, please come, please come. And then people will leave their evangelism, leave their witnessing, and go to this uh, wedding. And then after seven months, uh, the person puts to bed. The person is already having a child. And then you remember that you are the best lady. You are the best man there. And you go to ask and say, brother so and so, I was there that day and I knew the date you married. Is it not uh, on such and such a particular day you married? How is it now that your wife has already put to bed? Ah, I don't know because uh, nobody can explain the work of God. <laughs> and you know that you are living in sin. Don't let us deceive ourselves. 
It is not enough just to say we are deeper life. We are preaching ye must be born again. We are preaching be ye holy for I am holy. But are we born again? Are we living holy? In this matter of men and women, are we righteous? In the matter of not having immorality, are we righteous? I'm not talking about denominations. I'm not talking about people outside. I'm talking about us. Am I righteous? Are you righteous? Members of the choir, are they righteous? The ushers, are they righteous? Those who are married among us, are you faithful to your wives? Are you faithful to your wives? Or do you run away from home and then you go to meet other women outside? What do you do in secret? If you don't expose yourself to the Lord and tell the Lord to forgive you and to cleanse you and to change you, one of these days, he will expose you. And when he exposes you, all the world will know. All the world will know. And about our marriages, do we still know that a believer must not marry an unbeliever? Are we patient? Is our flesh under control? Are we actually following the Lord? Or are we just hiding under the name deeper life, deeper life, deeper life? In Genesis chapter 6, verse 3, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be a hundred years. There were giants in, the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, they bear children. Yes, you can bear children. Some people say, uh-huh, this is what bro said is bad. Look at the children we have now. And that child in the maternity where we had the child, they said, that's the biggest boy that has ever been born in that hospital. In that maternity. And bro said that this one is bad. Look at it now. A giant of a baby. And then the baby is growing. At the age of two years, the boy is talking like a boy of five years. And they say, hey, my wife, look at it now. They say, be not unequally yoked together with some believers. That time when I was going to marry, they said, it is not good, it is not good, it is not good. Look at it now. I mean, a, a good boy. And then the boy enters into primary one. They tested that boy after one more. They said you should go to primary three and come back home. And then you'll come to the Bible so that you say, hey, brother, I want to give you testimony. You remember six years ago when I wanted to marry and you said, it is not good, it is not good. Well, I know that you are not God. I know that uh, you didn't understand. But now, can you see, can you see that everything is going well? Since we married, now we're using the second car. Since we married, we've now got a house of our own. Since we married, I've been promoted in my place of work. Since we married, now this is our first child. And all the children, they have never been sick. And you said that time it was not the will of God. You wait and see. They are giants. Don't judge by outward appearance. Judge by the word of God. There were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when, sons, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bear children unto them, the same became mighty men. Mighty men, which were full men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. Wickedness of man was great in the earth. And that every imagination of the thought of a heart was only evil continually. I tell you some people, they are always thinking about women. In the morning they wake up like this, it's about women they are thinking. If they are eating, they are, th they are thinking about women. If they are in the bus, they are thinking about women. That's why their lives are upside down. They can't plan for themselves. If they see a woman, they'll be shaking. They, they just lose all their thinking faculty when they see a woman. They can empty all their bank account when they see a woman. They just lose their senses. And there are people who say they are Christians who have such a problem 
they won't know how to talk anymore. If they, if they are talking witnesses somewhere and they say, lady around, they just leave their preaching and they want to impress that lady. They want to make sure that they are great. They are somebody because a lady is around. And they say they are saved. They say they are children of God. They say their names are still in the book of life. And um, those of us who are married, there are times your wife is suffering at home. You can't give 10 naira to cook to your wife. But if it is outside and a lady says, I need money, how much do you need? You'll give 20 naira, 30 naira and say, if it is not sufficient, come back and ask me again. But when you come home and your wife says, can I have money to cook? Uh-huh, money. You don't know how difficult it is to have money. You don't know how to spend money. You just go for Bible, you go to Bible study for nothing. The five naira I gave yesterday, you have not finished it. And you're asking for money now. And you hypocrite, you know that you are giving much more money to women and ladies outside. Now who are we deceiving? Are we actually children of God? Are we following the Lord? Or are we just now following religion? Or are you like people who say, I am an Anglican, therefore I'm going to heaven. I am a Baptist, therefore I'm going to heaven. I'm a Pentecostal mission goer, therefore I'm going to heaven. Right now, people are saying, I am deep alive, therefore I'm going to heaven. No, sir. We don't deceive people here. Except a man be born again, he cannot do what? He cannot see the kingdom of God. That you are deep alive doesn't mean you are going to heaven. In fact, that I am preaching here, that I'm called a leader, or whatever name they call me, does not mean I'm going to heaven. The only thing that will make me get to heaven is that in secret and in public I live without sin. Without sin. Because not all that call me Lord, Lord shall enter into the kingdom of God. But they that do the will of my Father which is in heaven. For many will come unto me in that day and say, Have we not prophesied in thy name? Have we not done many wonderful works in your name? Have we not cast out devils in your name? And Jesus will say, I never knew you. I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that walk iniquity. So God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination, every imagination Every imagination, what do you imagine? What do you picture in your heart? It was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord. The Lord regretted. Do you want the Lord to regret that you were saved? Do you want the Lord to regret that you became a full-time worker in the vineyard of the Lord? Do you want the Lord to regret that he ever used you to preach or to sing? Or to witness. But here we are told the Lord regretted that he made man. He regretted. He regretted. And it grieved him. He was sorrowful. And if you know you have been grieving the spirit of God. If I were you. I'll just leave everything I'm doing. If you are a businessman, you'll just say, well, business, please stay aside. I want to seek the face of the Lord. If you are a person who is working with the government, immediately you come back from home, from your office. You just lock your door and you say, I want to seek the face of the Lord. It was not like this. 1971, when I was saved, that time I was careful. If, if I were you, I would just say no, I will not go and visit friends. This week I want to seek the face of the Lord. I want to ask him. I want to tell him to restore me back again. Because 1978 when I got saved, it was not like this. Or maybe you'll say 1981 at the revival time. It was not like this. And then you begin to pray. And you begin to expose yourself. And when the Lord begins to remind you to make restitution. 
how you have been living in, in hypocrisy. You just write everything down and you say, no, I will not preach until I settle everything. I will not sing until I settle everything. I will not do visitation until I settle everything. I will not deceive myself because Jesus may come at any time. At any time. At any time. You know, let me tell you this personally. Many preachers will not tell you, but I do. Because um, I don't like people getting deceived. I was said many, many years ago. Many years ago. Those of, those of you have been coming for a long time, you know, I've always said I was saved. 1964, April the feast. But um, a time came when I was tempted to go and commit sin. There are many sins that people can commit in the world. That's many years ago. And those many years ago, when I saw that, well, I didn't deceive myself. In fact, um, even though I wasn't in a place where I could have a place to myself, I went somewhere where I could pray. I said, Lord, I'm just a backslider. Backslider. I didn't come saying, I am brother so and so. I got saved 19 such and such. I am great. I am mighty. I am consecrated. I am saved, sanctified, baptized in the Holy Ghost. I am this, I am that. I just told the Lord everything. Until I saw that he washed every sin away and I saw that the record became clear before him. Well, that's better than just going around and just patching up and just patching up and just patching up. I remember a few years ago too, even when it wasn't that um, I felt my name was out of the book of life, I felt at that time my name was in the book of life. I knew that things were all right to a measure. And what I'm saying now is many years ago, but I was invited somewhere to preach. And uh, I, I took my Bible, I prepared the message I was going. And as I was going on the way, I just remembered. And God said, how about this, this and this? Not that I felt I was just a terrible sinner that my name was out of the book of life at that time. But God said, how about this? And I said, within me, how about this? And the vehicle was going and going and going to the place where I was going to preach. And then I, I was saying, how about this thing? How about this thing? How about this thing? But do you know, I said, I knew people were waiting for me over there. Wanting to listen to brother so-and-so, a great, great, great preacher. But I just thought, I just thought, then turned back. Went into my house and I made sure that that thing was settled. Of course, those people were disappointed. But it's better to disappoint them than to disappoint the Lord. Suppose I went on to preach. And then God will just say, you hypocrite. And then the vehicle that I was going with had an accident. What story will I be telling well, people will come from Onisha, come from Enugu, from, come from Portakot, come from Aduguri. They want to do the burial ceremony of brother so-and-so. You see, he died on service. He died preaching. But where will I go? What story will I tell? And then you come to heaven later, wanting to find me. Wanting to say, brother, you've gone ahead of us. And you look on those pallets, on those pallet gates and in those streets of gold, looking for me and looking for me and you can't find me. Oh no, I'm not going to deceive myself. I, I don't plan to commit sin. I don't plan to do anything wrong. But I tell you, if I did anything wrong tomorrow, I don't plan to. But if I do, I just, I just say, uh, quit here. I just not preach. I just sit down in the congregation and say, brother, sister, I just want other people to preach. Now, another person is going to preach this seminar coming Friday, Saturday, Sunday, so don't say, ah. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Aha, yeah. uh -huh. so Friday you'll be seeing another person here talking about uh, faith, and the first message is, is uh, it's not a laughing matter. That's the first message. Uh, of, of this seminar and another person will be preaching don't say ah he said so 
Do you understand? Yes. But uh, don't let us deceive ourselves. Don't let us deceive ourselves. Let us cling to the Lord and let us say, This holiness without which no man shall see the Lord, I'm going to have it. I am going to have it. You see, I've given you my own example. Because since I was converted, I didn't become like an angel since 1964. No, no. There were times I, I didn't have proper teaching and proper understanding. But I thank God because right now I can see the backside of the devil. Right now I know to resist the devil and make him to run. But uh, if you have backsliding, if you have done anything wrong, why not just call upon the Lord and say, Oh Lord, I don't want you to regret that I was saved. I don't want you to regret that I was born again. I don't want you to regret that I'm in the kingdom of God. But from now, I just make right my ways. And if you will call upon the Lord, He will have mercy upon you. Isaiah chapter 55. Isaiah chapter 55. From verse 6, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he's near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the righteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord. And he will have mercy upon him and to our God. For he will abundantly pardon. The Lord is calling us tonight. Let the wicked forsake his way. Let the unrighteous man forsake his thought. Let him return unto the Lord, for he will have mercy upon him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Matthew, Matthew chapter 24. From verse 37. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came, and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Well, that's what Jesus said. The time is coming. The time is coming. It may be tonight. It may be tomorrow, but Jesus said, as it was in that time, when children of God were backsliding and they were going to marry unbelievers, it will be like that when Jesus will be coming. How about you? Are you ready to meet the Lord? Or do you still want to do hide and seek business, still deceiving yourself and trying to deceive other people? Why not say tonight, I'm just going to call upon the Lord. I will not hide anything from the Lord. If you cover your sin, you will not receive the mercy of God. He that covereth his sin shall not have mercy. And, but he that um, confesses and forsakes his sin shall have mercy. Call upon the Lord while he may be found. And this is the day and the time and the hour to call upon the Lord. And whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And his name shall be called Jesus, for he shall deliver his people from their sins. Let us pray. Talk to the Lord tonight. In Jesus' name. God resists the proud. But he giveth grace to the humble. And if anybody is proud and he says, I am so and so, I will not confess my sins. I will hide my sins. God resists the proud. If anybody is saying, I've been a Christian since 19 such and such. I am a leader. I'm a pastor. And I will not tell God that I'm a sinner when you know you are a sinner. God resisted the proud. And he that has been often reproved and hardness his neck shall perish and that without remedy. In Jesus' name. Amen. Our Father, we thank you for this study tonight. 
We thank you because of your warning against the final judgment to come. Father, we pray that as many as have confessed their sins, forsaken them, forgive them in Jesus' name. Amen. Cleanse everyone wanting to be cleansed in the name of Jesus. Amen. We pray that you will give every one of us the power to go and sin no more. Amen. And help every one of us to be victorious and to live above sin and approach and above reproach in the name of Jesus. Amen. We know without holiness no man shall see the Lord. Therefore, Father, we pray that you'll implant that holiness within each one of us, without which no man shall see the Lord. Help every one of us to remain consistent. Amen. For those who have been falling and rising and falling and rising and falling and rising. Amen. Father, we pray that you lift them up in Jesus' name. Amen. For hypocrites who are deceiving themselves, we pray that you will convict them of their position in the name of Jesus. Amen. And help every one of us. To live to the glory of God Amen. and to please God Amen. and to walk in uprightness and holiness all the days of our lives. Amen. Thank you for answering our prayer. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.